Hey guys, it's Frank. Welcome back to my channel. I'm doing a test here where I'm actually going to be recording this in 4K as simply because I recently got a new MacBook Pro and uh, I'm going to be doing all my editing now on Final Cut instead of Adobe Premiere. But uh, let me know if you can tell the difference. Anyways, I recently moved out of Ontario and moved to Alberta and I thought I made the right decision. But last week, it was brought to my attention by one of my viewers that commented, why don't YouTubers try out other cities in Ontario? You have cities like London, Kingston, Hamilton, before moving out of Ontario. And initially, my reaction to that was, wow, why don't I just move north of Canada and just live up with the polar bears? I feel as though that I'll be too far away from Toronto to the point where I'd much rather just move to another Canadian city like Calgary and still be within the city, but removing all the challenges that exist, like housing prices or commuting. And I know there's probably people who live in one of those three cities who are probably thinking, Oh, but Frank, if I lived in London or Kingston, Ontario, I still have the option of driving into the city for my uh, Justin Bieber concert. With that in mind, I also had people commenting that they were on the fence of moving to Calgary, but they're still indecisive or want to learn a little bit more about the city before making a decision that best suits them. And because of that, I figured for this week's video, I'm gonna be sharing why exactly I chose to live in Calgary over rest of Canada. You see, right now, I'm trying to think of a way to say the good old smash the like button, but because I can't, just do it. It's free, St. Paddy's is coming up, so uh, I, I don't know. The first thing that really attracted me to the city of Calgary was the affordability of the city, more specifically, the home prices. According to Global News Canada, the average detached home in Calgary in February last month reached just under 500,000. This fact alone hit home because I still remember in Toronto where I was thinking of buying a condo. I literally was considering buying a 500 square feet condo in Bayview Village for approximately 500K. But personally, I just knew that one day I wanted to own a detached home and not a shoebox condo. And to achieve this in Toronto seemed nearly impossible. The trend there just seemed like you go there for post-secondary education, you graduate and then you work at a top five consulting firm and you work there for a few years before you can actually afford a 500 square feet, 500K condo that you live there for five to eight years. And then inevitably you probably will get married, have a family, and then you probably want to upgrade your condo to a small home. But in order to do that, you had to slap on another 500K in debt because home prices there are about a million dollars. And you might be thinking, wow, a million dollar home, that place must look so nice, but uh, you'll be quite surprised with what you can only get with a million dollars in Toronto. Honestly, it just felt like you're just working your tail off, working your butt off to one day catch up to the housing market and afford a older home that looks like you sometimes much rather just live on the street. Another thing that really attracted me to Calgary was the tax rate. In fact, in Calgary, we have one of the lowest tax rate across Canada. The tax rate in Calgary is literally only 5%. The only other places in Canada that has tax rates of only 5% is Northern Canada. And uh, again, like I said earlier, not trying to live with the polar bears. The second piece that really attracted me to Calgary was the infinite number of outdoor activities that I could do here. Especially during the pandemic, it's quite nice to know that you can do majority of the outdoor activities that you normally could do simply because they're all outside. For example, you can go water rafting on the Bow River, you can go hiking at Banff, you can go downhill skiing at the Olympic Park, and you can even go skating at the Olympic Plaza. And now that I'm based out in Calgary, it's very enticing to know that I'm literally an hour away to the Rocky Mountains or Banff. And when you do make that drive out to Banff, you literally see some of the nicest architecture, mountain view, that you would normally only see on a Christmas card, but you're literally seeing it with your own two eyes. Next was the low traffic that existed in Calgary. For a population of roughly 1.3 million people, I thought it could be a lot worse. Actually, to be honest, it's kind of funny when I hear people who would be literally upset that their normal 15 minute drive to work was instead of 15 minutes being 20 minutes and you're like, oh, oh my God, five extra minutes, I, I can't do it. It's quite nice to know that you can literally go diagonally across the four quadrants in Calgary within 30 minutes. But for the majority who are watching, typically if I'm going about my day and need to go grocery shopping or go get a coffee, typically it would take me no more between anywhere between five minutes and max 15 minutes. The fourth thing I noticed in Calgary was people's attitude and demeanor was a lot more positive. In terms of your work and your career and having talked to family and friends who are based out in Calgary, 
suggests that the city itself doesn't pride itself by out-progressing your colleague as much as Toronto does. Like actually though, when I was living in Toronto, it was never enough to just have a post-secondary education and have a few years of experience. And the reason being is because simply, everyone has it. And then you realize to stay competitive, you're gonna have to ramp up with a lot of certification. You might potentially have to go back to school for your master's degree, or you're gonna have to network with people who, let's be honest, you don't really care for. And you're literally all doing this to protect your job or get that promotion to make more money to one day, one day, catch up to the housing market. And the last one that I wanted to talk about was the weather that exists in Calgary. And you might be thinking, but Frank, why would I move to Calgary? Calgary is just so cold. Why would I ever want to move there? But did you know, did you know that Calgary is actually the sunniest city in Canada? In fact, they receive just under 2,400 hours of sunlight in a year, which equates to about being 333 days in a year. But what does this mean if you're considering moving out to the west? Well, I know a lot of people would move to Vancouver given that it's a lot warmer temperatures compared to Calgary, but they forget that literally half the year in Vancouver is gloomy, gray, or rainy. In fact, according to Wikipedia, Vancouver experiences 154.4 days of rain throughout the year. And sadly from what I read, that there are people literally in Vancouver who experience this thing known as seasonal depression from not seeing sun during the winter period for 30 days up to 60 days of seeing literally no sunlight. However, it depends if you prefer wet and gray like Vancouver or dry and sunny with Calgary. You'll definitely experience all four seasons and in the summer, you'll sometimes even have some crazy days where it will literally thunderstorm for 30 minutes straight and then the rest of the day, it's pure sunshine. Now, I only survived through one winter here in Calgary and a lot of people are telling me that the winter this year was severely mild, but it was only maybe two weeks in February where it was the extreme cold, but the rest of the time it was fairly warm. The reason being is that Calgary actually have warm winds that passes through the city in the middle of winter known as Chinooks. And this is an Aboriginal word for snow eater. Essentially to make it easier, it's basically when in January, February, that there are random days where the temperature will literally shoot up to 10 degrees Celsius out of nowhere. This phenomenon is caused from rapid air moving from the Pacific Ocean, climbing over the Rocky Mountain slopes. And as this happens, the wind warms and eventually passes through Calgary and at that point, that's when everyone goes and then they uh, hit the mountains and go hiking. So to wrap things up, in conclusion, having now lived in a small, medium, large city, all within Canada, I definitely realized that there are pros and cons to every Canadian city. But even then, even though that I've listed so many positive attributes with Calgary, I'm not blinded by the economy heavily dependent on oil and gas. But in my opinion, I am quite confident. I'm quite confident that in the next five to 10 years that as more and more millennials like myself start recognizing that they simply cannot afford homes in cities like Vancouver and Toronto, that they're gonna start looking at Calgary as an option. And being in the tech industry in general, I have high hopes that more and more tech companies in the future that are based out in Vancouver and Toronto may consider wanting to relocate their headquarters to Calgary and take advantage of the amount of space that we have here and the tax rate. But then again, that's just my opinion, that's my theory, who knows what actually will happen. So that being said, if you made it to the end of this video, thank you so much for watching and I will see you all in my next video. Peace.